Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name's Jasmine. I'm going to serve as a facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters are unable to see or hear you. Second announcement, you can use the Q&A feature in Zoom to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Third announcement, this is just one of a few different sessions that we're offering. So feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash New Jersey. With all of that said, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Moore College of Art and Design. Hi everyone, thank you so much. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our presentation today. My name is Elena. I'm from um, Moore College of Art and Design. We're located in uh, Center City, Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. So I'm here to share with you more about our programs uh, and hopefully uh, you'll find something that really captures your interest. So Moore College of Art and Design is a very career focused college. Uh, we're really looking to help you, uh, you know, find your creative career, find your foot uh, in these industries of uh, creative industries. Um, so really excited to share more about Moore. We were founded in 1848 as a women's school for textile design. Uh, we are, our current admissions policy includes uh, anyone who identifies as a woman or who is born female, as well as any students who are gender non-binary or gender non-conforming. Uh, really, the focus there is to serve those who have been historically underrepresented within the arts uh, and raise up those voices of those students. Like I said, we're located in Center City, Philadelphia. You can see our building there with the red brick on the left. Uh, we're right next to the Franklin Institute across the street from the Barnes Foundation. It's a really lovely area to be in in the museum district. Uh, certainly a lot of different uh, cultural activities, restaurants, cafes, as well as uh, galleries and museums for sure uh, that our students really love to enjoy. Uh, it's also very a walkable city uh, as well as public transit accessible. It's a lovely space to be in, um, especially as you have the you know small concentration of uh, students at Moore uh, having a very close-knit community while also being in a larger urban space. Moore's population is around 400 students in our undergrad program in total uh, and that student to professor ratio is also really important that's very indicative of our class sizes as well. Um, you know we're really focused at Moore to give you that one-on-one -on -one time with your professors that opportunity to network with them as well. They're all creative professionals in their industries and you know really making sure that you have the skill set uh, that you have the experiences you need to achieve uh, your goals in your creative career. We have nine different majors at Moore. You can see those listed on the right there. Uh, each of these is also available as a minor with the exception of art education and film and with the addition of creative writing, business, art history, and uh, textile design. So a really great opportunity, uh, especially if you're interested in a few different disciplines to uh, you know buddy up if you have uh, maybe a major in fashion design and minors in fine arts and business. Um, a really great opportunity, especially if you're interested in a couple of different disciplines uh, to explore or your artistic practice in those ways. You'll declare your program at the end of your first year, which is also a great opportunity if you're interested in a few different majors to really have time to become a college level artist, speak with your faculty and current students about their experiences uh, and be able to declare your program after your foundation year. Uh, the foundation year is also really great, again, to get you on that level to be a college level artist, taking classes in drawing, design 2D and 3D, uh, art history, color theory, visual theory, and things like that. Um, it's a really exceptional program to, again, start off your creative career. I did want to mention some things about our campus life. We have two residence halls on campus, uh, and what we lack in sports, we certainly make up for in student clubs. Um, it's also very easy to start up your own student club if you're interested. Uh, just having two other students who are interested in speaking with our student affairs office can also give you access to uh, additional funds if you have a conference or a museum that you'd like to go to. Uh, certainly, these are just some of the selections of clubs that our students have created on campus. 
we, like I said, we are a very career focused college and we're the only college for art and design in the country to offer a guaranteed paid internship. Uh, this is for every student and every major. Uh, it happens between your junior and senior year at more. So again, a really great opportunity to build that professional development and uh, work experience, especially before you graduate, to really get a sense of these creative industries, see which one is the right fit for you, uh, and also have this great experience for your personal growth. Uh, and that really shows in our student uh, uh, our student uh, experience uh, after graduation. So around 97% of our students one year out of graduation are employed in their chosen creative field or in grad school. So again, really showcasing that the skills you're learning in classes, as well as uh, the experiences that you'll have in those internship programs really make you valuable to these creative industries uh, and make you highly desirable as an employee and as a creator. These are just some of the locations that our students have either interned or worked with after graduation. So really great opportunities to work in a variety of industries, no matter your interest. Um, each of our majors, like I said, has that internship opportunity. So it can really vary depending on what you'd like to break into, what kind of experience you want to have at more. Briefly, I'll talk about our application process. Our required pieces for our application include the completed and submitted application, as well as transcripts and portfolio. The portfolio is really broad. We're looking for your best work of uh, nine, eight to 12 pieces in any medium or style, um, usually made within the last one or two years. If you have any questions about your portfolio, please feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to do uh, informal portfolio reviews, help speak with you further about what sort of things will go into your portfolio since everyone's be a little bit different. We are tests score optional, as well as optional for letters of recommendation or personal essays, although I'd always encourage if you can to submit those letters of recommendation and personal essays if you can. It's really great for us admissions counselors to get a sense of who you are, what you care about, uh, and what those who care about you have to say about you. I'll also mention that 100% of more students receive a scholarship to come to more. It's a really lovely merit scholarship program, so uh, it really aids uh, and uh, rewards you for the work that you've done in your high school career. Our top tier level scholarship is called our Visionary Women Honors Program. It's a $25,000 per year scholarship, uh, so we hope you submit your application. And these are just some ways to get in touch with us at more. Uh, we're at the National Portfolio Days. Like I said, we'd also love to do those informal portfolio reviews. We're hosting campus tours Monday through Saturday, and we also have an open house coming up on November 13th. So we'd love to have you on campus, and we also host virtual events. So I'll put this last slide on here. Uh, if you'd like to scan this QR code and get on our mailing list, we'd love to connect with you. Uh, and like I said, if you'd love to, I would love to see your work in, as part of your portfolio. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Our next presenter is from the University of Cincinnati. All right, hello everyone. Um, while I get this shared, uh, let me see, did that not go through? Um, I think that's screen sharing properly. <laughs> um, my name is Erin Stahlkeeper and I'm uh, the Regional Enrollment Coordinator for the University of Cincinnati. Um, and I am regionally based. So I basically work with students from the Northeast, New Jersey being one of my states. So if you are um, here at this tonight, then I am your counselor and I would be the one reviewing your application unless you're applying to our College Conservatory of Music. Um, so I will go ahead and get started. University of Cincinnati is a, uh, let me just make sure. Okay, great. Thank you, Jasmine. University of Cincinnati is a large public uh, tier one research institution located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we have total enrollment over 46,000 students. That includes all three of our campuses, as well as undergraduate and graduate students. On our main uptown campus, where out-of-state students are typically looking, we have about 27,000 students total. Um, so it is a large institution, but there are kind of smaller communities within that large community, the large enrollment number as well. Um, as you can see on your screen, 4.3% international students, just over 18% out of state and 24% of students identifying as racial and ethnic minorities. Um, we have over 350 academic programs. So it works to a large institution is there's a lot to choose from. It also gives you the flexibility of being able to do, depending on your major, some double majors or a major and a minor. We have certificate programs. So there's really a wide array of ways that you can combine your interests um, to create the career path that you're, that you're kind of set on. Um, we do have a 19 to one student to faculty ratio. 70% of the classes at UC have 40 students or fewer. Only about three or 4% of the courses at UC have um, over 100 students in them. Those are usually earlier on classes and in, in the beginning of your 
career at UC. And um, once you get into your major specific classes, it's definitely closer to that 40 or, or fewer number. Um, we do have an exploratory studies program that I like to highlight because it's what we call our undecided major. So um, instead of being undecided, it's really more about um, just exploring what's out there and figuring out what you want to do. So we have an entire center and staff dedicated to doing that and helping you through that process. Um, so if you're not sure what you want to study, that is completely fine at UC. Uh, you would just be looking to apply to our exploratory studies program. Um, otherwise, we have programs in engineering, nursing, medical sciences, business. Uh, we have our College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning, Arts and Sciences, College of um, Education, Criminal Justice, Human Services. I mean, you name it, Allied Health, it goes on and on. <laughs> so there's a lot to choose from. The Bearcat Promise is a really important and integral part to your experience at UC. It's basically the institution's promise to you as a student that when you graduate from UC, you'll have your degree in one hand and a career path or a plan in the other. So your whole time at UC is going to be working with faculty and staff to make sure that you're in the appropriate major for what you want to do, um, helping you figure out what that is, if that's where you need to start, and then making sure that you have some sort of a resume and experiences to solidify that interest moving forward to help you with, you know, whether it's grad school or getting a job or um, fellowships, whatever it might be after graduation. Um, so 100% of our students participate in experience-based learning at UC, and that can be in many different forms, clinicals, artistic performances, student teaching, research. Um, we did also invent co-op or cooperative education back in 1906, so co-op is a really big part of the UC experience. Um, basically, that's when students take an entire semester to work full-time. They don't pay tuition during that semester, they just have a co-op fee. Um, and during that time, they are being compensated, usually earning on average $10,000 per semester that they're on co-op. Um, and we do have internships available as well, which you could do while taking classes, which is different from co-op. Um, so a lot of ways to get that experience, but the Bearcat Promise is really integral to your time at UC. We have over 500 different student clubs and organizations. I will certainly not name all of them for you, um, but we do have kind of a short list of some general ones there for you, fraternities and sororities. We have a lot of um, intramural and club sports. We have division one athletics. Our, our Bearcat football team is doing really well right now. We're ranked number two in the country, so that's really exciting. Um, so there's a lot to choose from at UC, whether you want to um, be a spectator or you know, and be involved in the sport, or you wanna get involved in many of the different organizations and clubs that we have on campus. The city of Cincinnati, we have over 400 Fortune 500 companies located there, and I believe there are still eight that are headquartered in Cincinnati. So again, a lot of professional experience available to you just being in the city of Cincinnati. I also like to highlight that we've been ranked as one of the top five most affordable um, cities in the country, which is important because when you're thinking about going out to grab a bite to eat with friends or going to um, the movies or, you know, sporting event or whatever it might be, that can cost a lot of money depending on where you're located and um, even rent if you decide to live off campus, those types of things, gas, as we all know, living in the Northeast. <laughs> um, I'm based in New York, so I, I know for New Jersey what that's like as well. So there's a lot to, to kind of take advantage of in the fact that we have a lower cost of living in the Cincinnati area. In terms of the application process, we're on the common application. Um, our December 1st deadline is our early action deadline. I strongly encourage every student to apply by that deadline because it's also the merit scholarship consideration deadline. It's not binding, um, but we will not consider students for merit scholarships if you apply after December 1st. So you do have to submit your application and all materials by December 1st. So please, December 1st. <laughs> um, in order to be considered complete, you'll have to submit your common application as well as your transcripts. We're currently accepting official transcripts, unofficial transcripts uploaded through your portal, or your student um, academic record, the student SRIR, student self-reported academic record through Common App. Um, test scores are optional for fall 2022 applicants, except for nursing and early childhood education. If you're not applying to nursing or early childhood education, it is totally optional for you. Um, letters of recommendation are also optional this year. So really just to meet that December 1st deadline, you need your application submitted and your transcripts submitted. Um, and then if you're nursing or early childhood, you would need your test scores as well. Um, also a quick plug, I just got an email this morning that we will be waiving the application fee from November 1st, which is on Monday um, through November 14th. So definitely take advantage of that if you're considering UC. And here is my contact info. Um, if you have any further questions, I am more than happy to answer them. Obviously six minutes is not enough to cover a large institution with so much to offer or any institution really. So um, definitely reach out to me if you have any further questions and I am happy to help you. Thanks.
Thanks, Anne. Our next presenter is from Marionette College. Wonderful, thank you very much. So here at Merrimack College, um, I'd like to start off with the fact that we were founded over in uh, 1947. Uh, we were founded as a Catholic Augustinian um, University College and uh, to serve uh, the purpose to serve the uh, World War II veterans. Uh, at Merrimack College, we do have uh, 4,000 undergraduate students and 1,400 graduate students, and that number will be increasing uh, for the upcoming year. We do have over 100 academic programs and over 60, um, it's a little bit getting closer to the 80 marks of clubs and activities. Uh, with the location of Merrimack College, we are located in the town of Andover, which is 25 miles north of Boston. And within the class, um, the student population, uh, 38 states are represented within the student population and 47 countries are represented as well. Uh, along with our uh, Division I uh, varsity sports teams. At Merrimack College, um, one of our biggest class is the Gerard School of Business, followed by the School of Health and Sciences, Liberal Arts, Science and Engineering, along with the School of Education and Social Policy. Our student-faculty ratio will be a 60 to 1 ratio. Average class size will be around uh, 22 uh, class size. We do have a uh, Dunkin' Donuts here on the campus, and then we also have a cafe that serves Starbucks coffee for students to be able to have access to. Now, 73% of our students live on a campus, but it's not required to live on campus. Students can commute, and we have a full uh, commuter lounge for students to be able to utilize while on campus to have a place for them to relax, do homework as well. Now, all of our students uh, will receive iPads when they enroll in Merrimack College. And the reason for that is that we'd like to provide the opportunity for students to work on the courtyard, work in the library, work in their school building as well, partner up with other individuals to be able to complete the work. This iPads, um, they, the students will keep. They do not have to return it back to us when they graduate. We up to, often as well will update those iPads. So by the time that their junior year comes around, you'll receive an upgraded version of those iPads as well. We do like to focus on the career aspect of the students here at Merriman College, just because we do have a good amount of hands-on experience. So typical within our classroom setting is that the professor will lecture for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then we'll go on an activity or group collaboration project for the rest of the hour, hour and 10 minutes, which then allows you to have experience to put on your resume after you graduate. We do have internships and co-op programs as well. Along with those uh, internships and co-op programs, we also provide a career advisor in addition to an academic advisor for the students to be able to benefit from. We have uh, several different dining options here at Miramar College. And one of the most uh, popular food option is our food truck. Now, within the Gerard School of Business, we do have several different majors that the students can pick. Um, within this uh, School of Business as well, students have the opportunity to join different clubs that will give them real experience. For example, within the School of Business, they are able to manage um, investment funds for the Merrimack College, and that's real money that the students are managing and getting experiences for investing for their use after their career. In education, school, education and social policy, criminology and criminal justice are one of the most uh, famous majors that we have. There's also a path and opportunity for students to uh, get their master's degree for this criminology program within five years. School of Health and Sciences, we have a specific nurse that works with all of our students in health and sciences if they want to pursue a pre-med track, a pre-vet track, pre-physical therapy track as well, to be able to get them to their school of their choice after they graduate from their undergraduate degree. The School of Science and Engineering is uh, very cool as well, just because the students in the freshman year will work on a project together with the rest of the engineers to be able to bring 
um, a kind of project together here on campus to be able to give them the real experience right away as a freshman that typically wouldn't get um, until later in the years and, and some other universities. The School of Liberal Arts, we do have the opportunity for students to be able to kind of explore different options. We also have a Discover program as well in all of our schools for students who maybe don't know what they want to do yet, and, and that's fine. You don't have to decide on what your major is going to be until your sophomore year. We have a good amount of minors as well, and typically those minors, the academic advisors, will make sure that your major and minor kind of pair up together to give you real experience to take with you after you graduate from your degree here at Merrimack College. Now, for the application process for Merrimack College, we are on a common app, or you can complete the Merrimack application. Uh, we will need your high school transcript or secondary school report, uh, letter of recommendation, and then an essay as well. Uh, we have no application fee and the test scores are not required. We have been test blind uh, for a few years now and we'll continue to do so. So meaning that no ACTs or ACTs are required. If you get a great score, you send them over to us. We'll celebrate with you to be able to get that good score and your achievement, but it does not become a part of your application process. We do have early action on the rule 15 and then early action two on January 15 and then the rolling um, admission after the August 1st timeframe. We do have a couple of different um, open houses coming up as well. And then we also do virtual tours for nursing. The only difference that we have is that you would need two letters of recommendation as opposed to the one. And uh, the scores are still not required for the nursing program either. 99% of our students do receive a grant or scholarship. And then we have set aside $85 million in institutional grants and scholarships to be able to award um, in the upcoming year as well. And then typically the students do get about 22,300 in scholarships and grants as well. This is just an area view of the campus. There's about 200 acre campus, it is growing. We're currently in the process of building a bowling alley and a theater in our main hall. If you have any questions, feel more than free to reach out to us. Um, if you wanna visit the campus, go ahead and visit merrimack.edu apply. And then any questions, feel more than free to put them in the chat and I'll leave my information in the chat as well. Thank you. Our next presenter is from William Patterson University. Hi, <clears throat> hello everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie, I'm from William Patterson University. Uh, it's great to speak with you guys tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and just share my screen really quick. Alrighty, um, so pretty much William Patterson University, if you've never heard of us before, we are located in Wayne, New Jersey. Uh, Wayne is pretty much about 20 miles right outside of New York City, so we have great internship opportunities for our students. Uh, we have 43 Fulbright Scholars among our faculty, which is great. Pretty much it's like as if your faculty was studying abroad, came back and showed you exactly what they learned. Um, so it's uh, one of the most diverse institutions as well in, um, in, the, in New Jersey. Uh, we have academic support centers for our students. So um, if you're interested in getting together with a study group um, after you have your classes or get extra help or tutoring, um, you can go to our academic success center. Um, we also have um, meeting rooms where you can uh, schedule uh, time to meet with your study group as well and labs too, to help you with your classes and career support and career development centers. Um, we do currently have um, the College of Arts, Humanities um, and uh, Sciences as well. Um, music is actually one of our most popular, uh, we're most well known for our music and nursing program. Those are our two most competitive programs. Uh, we have one of the top five music programs in the country right now. Um, if, if you are interested in music, uh, you do have to submit an audition along with your application. Uh, so it is performance based and you do have to choose a, a path of either jazz or classical. Um, also, we have our arts degree where you could do art studio or fine arts. If you choose to do fine arts, a portfolio uh, is required to be submitted. 
and it will be reviewed if for some reason your review doesn't go through you do have the option to go into the art studio and resubmit for review your portfolio again um, in our communications uh, program um, a really popular one amongst our communications program is our um, broadcast journalism we actually just had a graduate who got signed with the nba as a broadcast journalist um, our theater and comedy program is great. We have a black box theater that's student run from sound to lights to acting. Everything is all student run, uh, which is great. And they're always hosting different events too on campus. Um, in our humanities and social sciences, psychology and um, sociology are very popular um, in that program. We also have the College of Education and College of Business. Uh, we were actually founded as a teaching school so I don't think that there's a school in New Jersey that you go to, you won't find someone who graduated from William Patterson University that works there. Uh, we're very well known for our teaching program. Um, for our College of Business, we have one of the highest accreditations a business school can receive. So your degree will be very widely recognized amongst the business field. Um, so that's just some information there for you. Uh, we also have our College of Science. Um, and um, probably our most popular in that program would be nursing. Um, so nursing, like I said, is one of our most competitive programs. It's a hard deadline for seniors to apply by December 1st for nursing. Uh, we are test optional at the school to be accepted, um, but for the nursing program, it is required to submit SAT scores if you fall below a 3.5 GPA. Uh, in order to not submit any test scores, you would need a 3.5 GPA with A's and B's in your sciences and chemistries for nursing. Um, if you're an athlete, we are a division three sports school. Most of our athletes tend to lean towards exercise science or sports medicine. Um, and you could do a pre-professional track like pre-PT, for example. Um, another popular one is bio on a pre-med track if you're interested in doing something in the medical field. Uh, you can apply two different ways through Common App or on our website. Um, so you can always just submit your application by January 1st for scholarship consideration. Um, so I always recommend, even though we're rolling admissions, you can apply sooner, which is great. I always say if you want a Christmas present, apply sooner. Um, but January 1st is the priority deadline for scholarship consideration. Um, also, obviously, just make sure that you do have your transcripts sent over to William Patterson as well. Um, again, we're test optional for all majors, but just it's always encouraged for more scholarship consideration to submit your test scores. So here are all of the deadlines, just if you guys want to take a quick look. Take a quick screenshot. December 1st, hard deadline for nursing. And if you have any questions, um, you'll see all the territories for New Jersey and who your counselor would be. Um, so if you live in any of the counties that you see on the bottom right, Middlesex, Monmouth, Burlington, Camden, Gloucester, we keep going on and on. Um, that would be me. I would be your admissions counselor. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, uh, put anything in the uh, chat and send it directly to me. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Our next presenter is Danielle. Hi, everyone. I'm just gonna share my screen really quick. Okay. So welcome to Iona College virtually. So first off, if you're wondering why Iona, so here are some pointers about Iona. So we have 94% of students who graduate from Iona are employed about six months after graduation. Um, we have about a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. Our class sizes are relatively small with maxing about 20 students per class. Makes it easier for students to get in touch with their professor and makes it easier for them to know each other as well. So 100% of our students, of admitted students, receive scholarships and financial aid, which I'll talk about too in a little bit. And then we are 30 minutes from Midtown Manhattan. Um, we are Metro North Line from New Rochelle to Grand Central. And then we are ranked 13th in the nation of Money Magazine's list of most transformative colleges. So here's a map of Iona College. So Iona is located in New Rochelle, New York. So again, we are 30 minutes from New York City um, from the train. 
So our main campus is right here. And then North Avenue is like the main street of New Rochelle. Across the street from Iona's campus are some of our residence halls. We do have a classroom building as well as our auditorium. And then our speech clinic and our nursing facility is up the hill up this um, street right here, Mayflower by the Holy Family Church. And then we've recently acquired um, Concordia's campus. So our Bronxville campus is about 10 minutes from Iona and we're focusing that on health sciences and our occupational therapy as a graduate program. Um, we've also partnered with New York Presbyterian as of recently. So that is great for health sciences, for our nursing students, for jobs, our clinicals or other internship opportunities. So just to reiterate too, for students, we are about 4,000 undergraduate students. We are a liberal arts school as well with 45 academic majors and minors. So here's a list of our academic programs. And then we do have dual degree programs as well. So depending on the program, for example, business, you can get your four years undergraduate bachelor's in business and then spend an extra year for your master's. Same thing with chemistry in adolescent education or computer science, psychology, et cetera. And then we do have joint degree programs as well with LECOM. So especially if you're in a biology, um, a biology major on like a pre-med track or a pre-dental track, for example, we have early acceptance programs with LECOM. So you'll be applying to Iona as well as LECOM, reserving your seat for graduate school there. And then we do have a joint degree program with Seton Hall. So if you're interested in law, we have pre-law as a minor, you'll get your bachelor's at Iona and then go to law school at Seton Hall as well. And then we do have accreditations for our programs as well. So new academic programs, we do have a new nursing facility. So our nursing facility is directly on our main campus. We participate in valuable clinicals and internships. We have state-of-the-art medical equipment as well. And then we are test optional in nursing. We do have GPA requirements as it is a competitive program. So we look for a 3.5 GPA or higher in nursing. Um, but again, bringing back to the New York Presbyterian affiliation it is great for students for jobs and internships and their clinicals especially. So for the internships and career services, again, we are a 30 minute train ride from New York City. So we have the Gale Express, which is a shuttle service that transports our students from Iona's campus to the New Rochelle train station. They'll take the train to New York City for their jobs or internships. A career development center is what helps you with networking events, um, career and internship expos, mock interviews, if you need help filling your resume or finishing your cover letter. Um, we do have a website called Handshake, which is similar to LinkedIn, basically your online profile, um, then you would put your interests in that and that would help you find different opportunities around the area. So here are some companies that our students have worked with in the past or are recently working with as well. So big companies such as like ESPN, IBM, Google. So again, that ties into the 94% of students graduating from Iona finding jobs after graduation. And then also with academics too, in declaring your major, it's okay if you don't know what you wanna major in your first year, that is totally fine. We have our students declare their majors at the end of their sophomore year. So you have those first few years where you're taking core classes or you're taking intro classes to things that you might like and things that you don't like. So you could see um, specifically what you wanna major in. And then we are a division one school. So we have 21 total division one teams between women and men's. So here are the lists of the women and men's sports that we have. We do have club sports. So this past fall, we've opened our women's um, soccer, our club soccer team. And then we do have weightlifting. In the spring, we're starting a men's lacrosse team. And then also if there's a sport or a club or any interest that students are showing that we don't have, then students can work with the athletics department and the student success department or whichever department it falls under to get those clubs started. So then going with the application process, we're only through the common application. So that was the only way you can apply to Iona. Um, for the admissions materials, we do look for a high school transcript, the two recommendation letters. Um, we would recommend one from the high school teacher and one from a high school counselor. Um, your personal essay, there are prompts on the common app, but you can write it on any topic you'd like. And then again, we are test optional in terms of SAT and ACT. In terms of GPA, we look for a solid B average. So on a 4.0 scale, that's about a 3.0. And then some deadlines is the early decision deadline is a binding contract. So that is December 1st. Our early action is December 15th and our regular decision is February 15th. 
And then for financial aid and fees, all students are eligible for merit-based scholarships. So as of last academic year, we've awarded between $10,000 to $25,000. Um, again, the higher GPA you have, the more scholarship eligibility you have. And then for tuition and fees, we do have a breakdown. So it amounts to about $60,000 um, in tuition for the entire year. And thank you so much. And this is the contact information. I will also drop it in the chat as well. Thank you, Danielle. So that concludes the presentation portion of our sessions today. We're now gonna transition to the Q&A. I wanna encourage all of our presenters to return. Feel free to turn on your cameras and I will pose a question to the group. Our presenters will respond to the question in the order in which they presented. The question is, what advice do you have for someone going through the college admissions process? So we'll start with more College of Art and Design. Great, thank you, Jasmine. Uh, so my best piece of advice always for students who are starting the college search process is to talk to current students if you can. Um, you know, certainly us as admissions counselors are always happy to answer questions you have. Um, you know, please don't feel shy to ask any sort of questions you have at all. We're, we're really here for, um, for you and for making sure that you understand the college process because it can be confusing. Um, but certainly being able to talk to current students is a really great part um, to be able to hear about what classes are really like, what student life is really like, get a good sense of what it would be like to be a student on campus, because certainly we can speak to that a little bit, but certainly current students can speak to it most. Um, so that would be my best piece of advice there. I would add to really pay attention to deadlines. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, um, but the thing to keep in mind with deadlines is that sometimes just because an application is due on say December 1st, um, doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have access to everything you need by December 1st. So what I mean is that sometimes the way that our systems work is if you have to upload something into a portal, there might be a 24 hour lag for you to do that. And then now it's December 2nd. Um, sometimes it doesn't happen, sometimes it does, but just don't put yourself in that situation um, or your letter rec or your recommender or your counselor. Sometimes they can't access the portals they need to to upload what they need to upload for you until maybe 24 hours after you click submit. So take whatever deadlines you have. And I would add kind of go back a week and make that the, the deadline for yourself so that you give your counselors, your recommenders, anyone else that has to upload stuff at least that week to try to get things in by the, the true deadline. Um, so not exciting, but very, very important. <laughs> Mary Mac, you feel free to respond. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I, I think one one piece of advice that I've been giving students as I'm I'm talking to them is is making sure that they have time to um, talk to the talk to the professors and sort of get a feel for the campus as well. I think that um, the environment that you're going into, you're going to spend four years, sometimes maybe even five years in this environment, and so. If it's an environment that you feel like you're not comfortable in, if maybe the city doesn't feel right to you, or maybe the campus itself doesn't have something that really is a make or break for you, um, it's good to see the campus, the different campuses and what they have available for students, because you are going to be spending quite a few, um, a few years and, and weeks, days there on campus. And so we want to make sure that it's a place that you feel comfortable and a place that you feel like you will have the opportunity to be yourself. Oh, Stephanie, you're, you're welcome to respond. Okay, thank you. Um, I would say that probably one of the biggest pieces of advice is your counselor and advisor are going to steer you in the right direction. Um, sometimes you may not feel that way. You may feel like you're, um, you know, you want to go in a certain direction, obviously always do what's best for you, but know that they have your best interest in mind. Um, so sometimes the advice isn't always what you want to hear. Maybe it means you may have to be, it take longer to graduate in the program that you want. Um, and you know, you may know someone who did it in sooner amount of time at another university or whatever the case may be. Just remember to keep in mind that everyone's different. Everyone has a different path. Um, if you, if your degree takes a little bit longer, but it gets you to where you want to go, just make sure ultimately your goal is to be in your career 
of choice, right? Your passion. Um, I always say, if money is not an option, go for what what it is you really want to go for, simply because um, the money will come, but you're always going to want to love what you do. So just make sure that you're on the right path starting from this point. And I know it's very hard and overwhelming to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life right now. Um, trust me, even myself, when I was in your shoes, I changed my major very close to graduation. So just know early on that speaking with your advisor and getting close with them about what classes exactly do I have to take to get to graduation by this point, um, they'll steer you in the right direction. Always just communicate. If you have any questions, never feel afraid to ask. We've heard it all. And if we haven't heard it, that's even better. It gives us a challenge to make sure we get your question answered. Um, so I think my best advice would be that. And going off of what everyone said, I definitely agree with everyone's advice. Um, I would definitely highlight, though, again, with Mary Mac, like visiting campus, because I feel like every student would need to step physically on the campus to see kind of envision themselves where they're going to be in the next couple of years to see if that school can offer them what they're passionate about or something, because this is your future. Um, but definitely you would need to envision yourself as a student, kind of put yourself in those shoes and see where you see yourself in a couple of years. Thank you all for your responses. So that concludes our virtual college fair for today. But I do have a few closing announcements. As you exit from this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. I also wanna remind you to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash New Jersey. I wanna thank all of our presenters for joining us, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening.